Dennis, let me, ask, let me ask you, uh, and then the group can chip in on this as well. What about the evolution of HANA? Because y you've been pretty skeptical about HANA, and your skepticism is still there, but you've definitely been influenced by the startups that you've interacted with. Mm. And that raises this question around SAP, HANA as data database, and the database wars with Oracle and the land grab or whatever that's called. And then there's the HANA as platform and where that's headed. What is your view right now? Well, look, I mean, all this talk about HANA as a database, quite frankly, is a, is a waste of time. If you, if you take out, they're not going to compete against IDM DB2. They're not going to compete against Microsoft MS SQL. So the only other alternative that they're going to go after is Oracle. If they honestly think that they're going to kick Oracle out of the game anytime soon, given the number of licenses that are out there, number of long-term agreements that are out there, number of tax um, taxes that SAP can collect on Oracle's behalf, they live in fairyland. I don't care what anybody says, right? But, 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 I can see replacement for those companies that have had enough of Oracle. We don't know the number. Some but I, modest, I don't, I don't modest revenue stream of some kind? Some kind, but it's got to be less than the tax that SAP collects. Um, but the real value for me is, is in the startup stuff. Because this answers the what question that SAP cannot itself answer around the future of HANA. Because it cannot know the kinds of solutions that all its customers are going to need, right? If every one of its customers only needed one solution, it would have to come up with 190,000 of them. That, it's never going to do that, right? It needs the million developers that Schnabra and all the others talk about in order to discover what those solutions look like. We have been very fortunate to have seen some of them, right? And we've seen some absolutely kick-ass stuff. Uh, really, yeah, really, really, yes, good. really yes. good. Didn't come from SAP. None of None. it's come from SAP. All of it's come from people that we've never heard from. I mean, here we had a guy on the couch here. He's, him and three other guys. That's it, right? Boom. I mean, when, if SAP can really accelerate that kind of program, then it's in to win. If it doesn't, if it forgets that, or if it gets tired of it for whatever reason, right. I don't know what happens. Some of these guys have built apps in a matter of weeks. Yeah. You know, yeah. At, at, or added HANA capabilities onto existing yeah. apps. Yeah. Within weeks. And yeah. it, that's pretty impressive. Um, I think some of the work that they're doing is, is really, really interesting. Um, what I question, though, is um, right now these guys get HANA for free mm -hmm. with the, within the SAP program. Is the pricing going forward structured? to support startups that are not part of SAP startup program, but want to use HANA as a database. And there, you know, I'm thinking HANA One's pricing or any other similar as a service well, offering. Okay, well, they they put HANA One out there as a, as a means of You can do it basically at AWS pricing, right? Mm -hmm. If you can't afford that, then why are you even bothering, right? That's how I would view it. Well, that's $3,000 a month. And it's, well, you know. Yeah, but is it that big of an ask? No, but for given the value that you can get, uh, it's not. It really isn't. But uh, the entry point for startups is it becomes hard. Like, w so then they're really weighing. Uh, okay, what are my other options <coughs> in the open source world? And of course, I have to spend more time building it. But can I offset that huge? Uh, it's actually look, look. I think that's a myth, right? You said you know this open source stuff. I love it, right? But it's a myth. If, if I take open source, who's going to who's going to manage it? Me. Yes. Who's going to maintain it? Me. Fact, who's going to support in it? Fact, a couple Me. Of startups brought that issue. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so what would I rather do? I'd rather pay somebody to do all that shit for me. That's that, for example, is why John and I pay a, 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 a network carrier to, mm -hmm. to to stream this stuff. We could do it ourselves. Fine. But. For me to do it, I've got to be sat behind there and here. I can't, I can't be in two places at once. But the ecosystem there is also pretty good, right? Yes, I have to support it, but there is, like, I mean, let's, let's take Hadoop, for example. And a lot of these use cases, um, they don't map exactly across Hadoop and HANA, but there are, you know, there are things that you can do in Hadoop better, but people are still choosing HANA because SAP is providing the support. But if they were on their own without the program, uh, well, what are they looking okay, at? Okay, that's fine if you want to build a 99 cent app. Right? Right. But if you want to build an app that delivers value into an enterprise, it sure as hell ain't selling for 99 cents. Of course. Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the people that I'm speaking to are talking about applications, that even on the mobile side, simple mm -hmm. apps on the mobile side, it's going to be forty, fifty thousand $50,000 or euros, right? 
Well, if I can't sell that once for 40,000 or 50,000 euros and at the same time be prepared to spend, what is it, 35,000 on the other side for the whole support thing, only th just to break even, mm -hmm. I haven't got my economic head screwed on. Seriously. Okay. Yeah, that's something to think about, really. Well, we can argue about uh, it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly. Because I think from an... Look, look, look. Here, here's the thing, right? And here I'm probably going to agree with my very good friend, Vinnie Merchandani. Mm -hmm. Hello, Vinnie. What up, Vinnie? Where, where, where I would say that, yes, in the enterprise world, we have to get closer to the consumer world in terms of pricing and all the rest of it. But let's not... This is where I'll disagree with you, Vinnie, and you can suck on that. Um, if you want to play in the enterprise space... Please don't come with Thrupp and Saintney in your pocket, because you're not going to get any change. Do you see what I mean? Yes. <laughs> and, and, okay. but, I'm, but on the other hand, I'm not say, saying that you have to be into champagne pricing. You know, th that's far from that, far from that at all. But when I see brilliant examples like predictive, um, the, the ability to predict when a consumer might leave as a, a, in an energy utility, mm -hmm. The cost of that person leaving is, is astronomical, okay? Why am I not going to pay the money? That app, that app is really good, by the way. I, I, I know it's good. It's really, really yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but and there are lots of those. But see, some, these examples have come into this ecosystem because mm. SAP went in and offered, mm. you know, we'll do everything for you. We'll provide you engineers inside which will, who will support you. Yep. We'll make it free for you. Yep. We'll support you in getting customers. Yep. Yep. Uh, and that's within the, the, the limits of that program. I'm saying that can others outside the program embrace all that value without SAP support, I guess? I'd be very surprised if they could. Yeah, I, I, I get all that, right? But if the, I, what I have seen so far is indicative. If the idea is good enough, you will get attention, right? And, and the most important thing is it won't matter how big or small you are. Because if a four-person company can get attention, get on the program, get a great product out there, come on. Right. The barriers are not that Especially great. Especially if they have SAP's backing, and that was one of the big things that came out of the startup discussion, which is we don't need SAP's help on the tactical side as much as we need SAP's help Marketing. amplifying us. And, and it's not just amplification, it's also the trust factor, right? So for a customer to say, I'm not just buying from four guys somewhere, I'm buying from an SAP certified, so blah, blah, blah. So that's where SAP's help comes in as far as legitimizing this market, I think.